Welcome to Leeds Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And uh, so we've got a little Chardonnay action here. Um, figured I'd go again with some more of the uh, brands that you're probably more likely to see. And uh, so this is a brand name that's been around for a while, and uh, I've seen it a lot. And I got this at the local supermarket, so I thought I'd get it. This is the 2007 Rodney Strong Chardonnay. Got it for $9.99 at HEB. And um, I don't need a rinse because this is the first review of the day. So um, uh, this winery has been around for a little while and um, uh, I figured it was a name brand that's well known. It's under $10, so uh, we'll check it out. So for the most part, I'm getting, I want to say like apples, which, okay, and maybe a little melon. And I definitely smell alcohol. So, you know, it's a little bit of, a little bit of heat. Um, but that happens a lot with white wines at room temperature. Not much else other than that. Some other fruits, you know, I get a lot of fruit, but it smells kind of apple-y, like green apple. Maybe some melon, see how it tastes. So, on the palate, I get some more of those same fruit flavors, but you get do get a little bit of creaminess to it. Um, you get some of that buttery. A little bit of butter, but you do get some acid to it. Um, the butteriness is starting to come through a little bit stronger now. Don't really get it on the nose, but definitely in the palate. Um, it's got a bit of a balance between the, some butter and some acid uh, and the fruits. It's not bad. Um, It's pleasant. What I like about it is it's not overly buttery. So you don't get this, this heavy, um, creamy, buttered popcorn type of, of flavor to it. Um, it's, I, I like it. I usually go for the, un, the quote, unoaked Chardonnay. Um, 
But this is pretty good. I think that the balance is, is, is a good balance between the butter and the acid. And um, it's not bad. Uh, I'd say probably, this is, I'm going to say around an 88 point wine. Um, I could see having this again. And uh, yeah, I definitely like it. So some history about uh, the Rodney Strong vineyards. Um, it was the, the gentleman Rodney Strong started making wine in 1962. Um, in 68, I believe, is when he got some more financing to buy some more to buy some more uh, vineyards. So I'm going to guess somewhere between 62 and 68, the actual founding of Rodney Strong Vineyards happened. Um, but prior to that, a couple years prior, uh, he and his wife uh, were getting wines, they were blending wines, and they were doing tastings. So he didn't start making wine until 62. Um, and he had a, a, his business was called, uh, I forgot what it was called, but it was a tasting, uh, uh, oh, I forget what the T. I looked it all up and I forgot it already. Um, but it was, it was a tasting thing until he started making wine in 62. This particular wine, I can't get, they, they didn't have the 2007 fact sheet on the website and that really concerns me. That concerns me, it just, it kind of bums me out that they only put, these websites only put limited information because, I mean, this is what I bought in the store. I didn't buy the 2008, I bought the 2007. But I have the 2008 information, which probably isn't much different. Um, and considering that it says it's 13.8% alcohol in the 2007 and the 2008 said the same thing, it's probably right about the same amount. So um, the, the information that I really wanted out of this um, is that, uh, oh, by the way, it's, a Cal it's California I'm sorry, no, no, I have a California. This is Sonoma County is the Appalachian. Um, so anywhere inside of Sonoma County, which Sonoma County, as uh, we're about to find out this week, um, has some pretty good stuff compared to Napa. But anyway, um, what I wanted to talk about was was the uh, how the wine was made. 70% of this is barrel fermented, 30% is cold fermented in stainless steel. So that's why you're getting that balance of so you get that little bit of a balance between the acidity and that butteriness. Um, the barrel fermentation is aged for five months in oak, American and French, so you're, you get the qualities of both. And then 70%, which is in the barrel fermentation, is the malolactic fermentation, that second fermentation. Um, and that's what's gonna give you that uh, uh, the butteriness uh, and the apples. So, um, they don't do 100% on that. They don't do it for very long. Um, so it's not like it's aged for 12 months or 24 months or 36 months. It's a five month. So you, you get the hint of the butteriness, um, but with, with the, the other part being cold fermented in stainless steel, you're gonna get, um, when they talk about pear and pineapple, I get more, I guess, I guess maybe I can see the pear, um, though it comes across as green apple to me. But you know what? Pear is probably. And they talk about apple aromas, bright lemon, I guess. Um, but I can kind of see the pear in there too. But the apples come through a lot more, a lot stronger. Um, it's a good wine. And for $10, um, you're not going to go wrong with it. Um, it's about the same as any other $10 Chardonnay. I don't think it, it, it I don't think it stands out necessarily. However, what what stands out is the fact that it is, it's not gonna be overly buttery. So if you want something like that, it has a little hint of it, then I say go for it. Uh, if you really want that buttered popcorn flavor, then this is not the wine for you. All right, so we've got that done. Um, today I'm doing three wines, or recording three wines, we're recording Sommelier School. So tomorrow it should be up on the site, Sommelier School, first part of California, so make sure you watch that. Uh, which means you have to go to the website, which is you know, everywhere, somewhere on this video. Um, as always, thank you for uh, friending me up. Uh, past 5,000 followers on Twitter sometime over the past few days, uh, which is awesome. Though I know a decent amount of that is probably people I should just like block because they're spammers or MLMers or whatever. But um, uh, for the most part, uh, most of them are true followers as far as I can tell. And uh, so thank you for all, all of you that follow me on Twitter. Um, so now we have to get to 10,000. Um, 
So friend me up on Twitter, tell your, tell your friends about it, uh, Facebook, and then uh, of course iTunes, uh, just getting more and more of the subscribers, iTunes, it's really great. You know, that's how I watch all these. I mean, I don't watch them listen on the computer, but um, you know, come to the site if you're watching this on iTunes, if you're watching this through one of the other uh, embedded players, not on the actual website, come to the site, check it out. Uh, you, you see Sommelier School, you can buy swag, so I'll just have the one t-shirt, um, check out the ads, all that kind of stuff, and you can donate. Donate 10 bucks. Help me buy another bottle of wine. Or you can be an executive producer. Put 50 bucks or more in there. You can get your name as an extra credit at the end. Um, all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, it does cost money to buy these wines and to put up the website and host it and and uh, all the other things that I do with the wine-related stuff. Um, so, yeah, be a little, you know, do a little contribution there directly. You don't have to, like, click an ad. Just, you know... The money will go directly to me instead of somebody else, and I just get a small little cut. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for now. We'll see everybody again on Friday with another wine. Thanks for stopping by.